Welcome to New School. My name is Karen Coney. I'm the director of the Viralist Center for Art and Politics and delighted to present yet another one of these outstanding uh, conversations or lectures by artists um, organized by the Public Art Fund, the Public Art Fund Talks at the New School. Tonight, we have the pleasure of having Mark Manders with us. The fall um, conversations this year have been grouped under the heading of Square Pegs, Round Holes, From White Cube to Public Sphere. And we will examine how the conventions of viewing in a so-called neutral space, the museum, continue to, continue to reverberate um, in our perceptions of contemporary art wherever it is presented, whether it continues to be in the White Cube or outside of it. However, rather than imagining a transition from one realm, the white cube, to another, the street, we're looking at the simultaneity of different conditions. In this, tonight, we're guided by, for instance, a number of titles that Mark has given to his work over the years, um, titles such as Par Parallel Occurrences, a work from 201, or Two Interconnected Houses, that are actually distinct and separate houses, a uh, project from 2010. But we're also bearing in mind the Verlist Center's current uh, focus theme, which is uh, dedicated to alignment and the question of temporary intersections and overlappings of different conditions or agendas. With this, I have the great pleasure of um, introducing Andrea Hickey, who is the Associate Curator of the Public Art Fund and will uh, properly and in more details present Mark Manders to you tonight. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Karen. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming this evening. And thanks to our team here at the New School, Karen Quoney, Pam Tillis, and Naomi Miller for all your help on our ongoing collaboration. I'd also like to just take a second to thank our myriad supporters and board members at the Public Art Fund, and in particular, the Dutch Consulate for its support of the program this evening. So as Karen mentioned, um, Public Art Fund hosts a series of artist talks in collaboration with the Verilist every season. Um, each series explores a specific theme, and for our fall season, as Karen mentioned, we've asked artists to consider how they approach the transition from working in the traditional exhibition space, like a museum or a gallery, to the equally complex arena of the public realm. As curators and producers at the Public Art Fund, we spend a lot of time thinking about the impact, the readability, the presence of art in public space for art lovers and non-art audiences alike. We know that these issues are extremely important to artists when they consider making work in this kind of context. So we thought, who better to share their insights on how the creative process is affected by the knowns and unknowns of public space than the artists themselves. So last month, we heard from Brazilian artist Irando Espirito Santo, whose first public work in New York recently opened at um, Doris Friedman Plaza on 60th and 5th at the entrance to Central Park. And tonight, I have the wonderful pleasure of introducing Mark Manders as the second speaker this season. Mark has had a significant exhibition history with numerous solo exhibitions internationally, as well as a major traveling retrospective in the US, which went to the Hammer Museum, the Aspen Art Museum, the Walker Art Center, and the Dallas Museum of Art in 2010. Currently, Mark is representing the Netherlands at this year's Venice Biennial with the critically acclaimed exhibition, which he titled Room with a Broken Sentence. So we'll hear lots more from Mark, but just a quick overview. Mark's distinctive multidisciplinary practice has incorporated enigmatic forms, and carefully constructed assemblages of things like furniture, humans, and animal figures, newspapers, welded pipes, and the general ephemera from everyday life. Often it's made from materials that don't seem quite what they are, uh, which I'm sure he'll talk about. Um, within his practice, both inside and outside of the gallery, Mark's approach to space and his acute sensitivity to how we as viewers look at his work 
um, is really an important part of his entire practice. The image on your program is a great example of this. Everyone takes a look. It's a, an image of a sculpture inside of a grocery store. Um, one of my great memories of working with Mark is a, an anecdote he told me when I asked him about how he knows when a sculpture is finished or ready for exhibition. And he said he would carry it to his local grocery store to see if it still held up. And I thought that was such an interesting way to think about how public space really affects your sculptures. Um, so it, that anecdote was actually a very important inspiration to the series of talks tonight. Um, and I hope that you will also join us for our third seasonal lecture, which is with the duo Alora and Calcedia, um, opening on Wednesday, November 13th at 6.30. Um, but for now, please join me in welcoming Mark Maunders to the stage. Okay, thank you for coming. Um, um, I will try to tell something about my work. Um, um, I cannot really explain my work, but I, I, I will just uh, tell something about it. Like, for example, this work. I, um, I made it in a room um, where, I n where I hardly ever sit. I just always walk around in this room and I just don't, uh, I just don't have time to sit in this room. And, um, and in this room I made this, uh, I just uh, got the idea to, um, uh, to place a figure on this chair. And um, so I took a piece of wood and I, uh, I took some clay and I, uh, and I made this figure. And, um, and if, you, if you make a figure of clay, um, um, and when you place it on a chair, it's, it's really bad for the chair and it's bad for the figure. So I put in between it, I put uh, some newspapers. And um, um, what I really like about this figure is that um, um, is that this figure doesn't have arms and also no legs, and it's it's. It looks very fragile and very, uh, but also very at ease and very, um, um, yeah, you, you cannot really, um, um, you know, this, this figure looks uh, in front of, in front of, of uh, uh, just looks a little bit like, uh, you just cannot look in, into the eyes of, the, of this figure. But maybe you have to be, um, uh, you know, I, but when you see this this work in a, in a in a in a museum, or in my studio, or like anywhere, or like in a supermarket, you will see that um, it you know the figure looks like wet clay, but and it looks like uh, it is just left behind by the person who made this figure. And um, but in reality, it's not uh, it's not clay. It's it looks like wet clay. It's like uh, it's made of epoxy, and the newspaper is. Um, is um, wait, I show the newspapers is um, uh, is made by my, myself. It's like um, uh, yeah. Wait, I <laughs> I go back to this picture. No, I really want that all my works look like that they are just made. Like um, I'm for more than twenty years, I'm already an artist, and all the works that I made are just just left behind. And, um, uh, and for that reason, I cannot uh, use a real newspaper because everybody would see that this work was, was made in 2010. And um, so I had to make a fake newspaper. And um, what I did, I, I took all the existing Engli English words and, um, uh, and I used every word only once in the newspaper. And, um, and I made photographs um, of dust in my studio, or just uh, things in my studio that, that are not related to, uh, to words. You, know, you never can recognize words in these pictures. And it really looks like a, like a real newspaper, but it's, uh, yeah, like it's not related to a place in the world, or like something that happened in the world, or like to, to a period of, like uh, it's just like a, like a timeless newspaper. And 
I can already tell now uh, uh, that my work is is also a little bit like a machine, like a um, you know I have, I have this idea of placing this figure on the on the chair, so it, so I, I I need to make and I I need a newspaper, but I'm not allowed to use a newspaper, so I have to make I have to come up with an idea to make a fake newspaper, so. Um, Um, uh, this work is for me very important. It's, it's the first work I ever made. And it's made uh, in 86, when I was 18. And, um, and when I made it, it was, not, it was not made as a work of art. It was, it was like, for me, a, like a, a floor plan of a book that I was going to write. It's like a, it's like a floor plan of a building with seven uh, rooms and a corridor and two round rooms. And my plan was to, uh, because I wanted to be a writer, uh, my plan was to write for the rest of my life about this uh, floor plan, and um, and this floor plan was like a like a like a self-portrait, and um, so I started, and um, but I I also started to to realize that it was uh, uh, I just really really liked to uh, you know when I stand stand in front of this thing. That, that I um, uh, that I stand in front of something that I I did in the, in the world like that, and this thing was was like very like frozen but it all like uh, materials that normally because it's made out of writing materials like pens and um, like paint and uh, pencils and, and like normally they they move around in the world but now they they're like they belong to, together and like as one thing. And uh, I really started to become fascinated by, by objects. And what I also liked was that uh, when I turned the light off, that it became like uh, the color disappeared. And, uh, and, and during the day, that, that, uh, that uh, the pens were different. And so I, I slowly, I, I, I became um, more fascinated by objects than, than language. And so I started to to make this building uh, like I, w I didn't write any more about this this floor plan about this things happening in this imaginary building, but I started to make objects. And this is the same floor plan a few l years later. Actually, two uh, uh, two similar four floor plans. Only uh, one is um, uh, like a few minutes later. Um, uh, I can show you something. Um. And this, this room, I have my, I have my, uh, I have my uh, clothes and my, my shoes. And in the, in, the, in, the, in the second floor plan, you can see that the, the shoes are a little bit uh, further away from each other. So there are just two, two following moments of the same building. And it's called self-ported as a building. And this is this is one of the rooms of this of this building, and it's a, it's a room with uh, with only fives, and um, um, I could I could make uh, like hundreds of rooms, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you know I can I could also make a room of six or like a room with uh, with uh, yellow or shoes or like I could I could take most of the words from the newspaper and make a room out of it. Um, but I chose only only five. Not not. Uh, I didn't have a particular reason to choose five, but uh, I wanted to have to, um, to to make a room of of, um, of one thing of the world, and um, and also I wanted to uh, test my mind. To like um, at that time when I made this this room. I think it took, took me something like seven years to do to make it. I, um, I, I, I said to myself that every time when I, uh, when I see a five, for example, five people, that I really consciously, consciously think five. And, and sometimes I took photographs or... And, um, because I realized, that, like, normally when you walk to the streets and you see five people or if you see five cars or... You don't consciously, 
consciously think five because it's, you don't have time for that. And it's, but our brain can can do that, and uh, I'm really fascinated by that. That that uh, the way uh, something something outside your body can can make you think something. And um, and also um, I can tell by uh, experience that that. Um, if you only focus on, on one aspect of the world, the world becomes really, really uh, more beautiful than you think. Because all the fives on the world, they are, they are in the same way. They are, they're all five, but they're they also very different and, and they relate really beautifully. And, um, and it, um, like, um, but at the same time, um, this room is also very scary, I think. So all the all the all the things in this room are fives. For example, all the five letter words, uh, lots of lots of names with five names with five letters. I made a newspaper with fives. And these these newspapers, uh, like for example here these, um, I printed them in a, a really big edition, like uh, I think 150,000, and I, I spread them house to house. But I needed only. Uh, only a few for myself. And this room has, the, has exactly the same uh, idea. This is also a room with only one one word, and it's it's the word uh, dog. And it uh, it took me 18 years to make this room. But if you see it, it looks like uh, it has just left. Uh, it's just made and just left by the person who made it. It's like a, it looks also like wet clay, and there are three dogs and some materials here, um, some humps of clay. And um, I just wanted to make a, a, a room with one one word, like with the word dog. Uh, and maybe it also comes from from the my will to become a writer. Like if you write a poem with a, like three times the word dog, it's it's like nothing. But um, as a sculptor, you can. There are so many ways to make to create a dog. And what I did, I, I tried to imagine um, that I was living uh, three thousand years ago, and part of a culture that never existed. And then then I made a dog. I stylized a dog in a way that could fit in this. Like in the yeah, I really tried to find a, a style that never uh, came into existence. It's, it's, uh, and then I, I I copied the dog three times. And and by re repeating the simple word, it becomes something very complex. And yeah, it's it's uh, it's not it's not about language anymore, but it's really about feeling and about. Uh, yeah, also in a way about death and uh, and it's made of bronze. It's painted bronze. And uh, um, I, re I really like uh, like clay. You know, it's a very fundamental material, and I really like wet clay. That that you can, uh, if you if you touch it, uh, that it will change. And uh, and I really want to want to keep that and f freeze that and. Uh, and I really like that, that it took me so many years to make this work. Like, like 18 years is very long, but it really feels like uh, very fresh. And this is a work that is made out of uh, three words. Like you have a table, corner, typewriter. And normally you have like a... There, there are three words that are very related to each other. Like, a, like a, a table is most of the time related to a corner. And the typewriter is related to a, to a table, and I just shifted these words one step, so it becomes like a stage to write a book. And uh, this is also um, a work made out of three words. It's called the Fox Mouse Belt, and it's um, it's also also made out of bronze, but looks also wet, like wet clay. And um, you know, when I, when I made this work, it's 92, I, um, it was an art school. I, I was really fascinated by uh, that animals eat uh, other animals. And, uh, and, I, um, and I just imagined like a, 
a room in my building where I invited uh, uh, I just placed the word fox inside and then the word mouse and um, I really realized that this mouse would go into the, the fox into the stomach and then I took my belt and I I just uh, made them put them together and, uh, and placed them on the ground and this is the same work um, uh, but then placed in a supermarket and I think around 91 I um, 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 yeah, I, I thought about um, it. It's a very strange decision to become an artist in a way, and and um, and I'm, I'm very happy that I can be an artist and uh, that I can uh, that I'm allowed to be an artist and that that uh, that, uh, that there is a place in, in society to 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 be an artist. It's, it's something very strange, I think, and very something very also very fragile. I think more fragile than we realize, and. Um, and when, when I make something, I really make it for myself, and I really I don't want to think about the public, and I don't want to think about somebody somebody else. I really want to make it, make something that is good for me. But in, 90, in 1991, on, on art school, I, I I started to imagine all the works that I make. Um, you know, I make them for this self-port of this building, for this floor plan, but I also. Um, I want them to be part of the of the real world, and I like every time when I finish a work, I I imagined it in a, in in a supermarket, and I I tested if if uh, if it can survive a supermarket, and if it if it can survive uh, without a yeah without a museum or without a gallery or without the label of an artwork, and um, and I think um, uh, and maybe it's strange to say, but uh, for me. I think uh, all my works can survive in a supermarket. Although some works are maybe too big, but I, I, I just test them there and I, and, uh, I don't know if I'm right, but uh, I, think I'm, uh, yeah, I think they can survive. And, um, and this summer I, 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 I showed this work in the, in the supermarket in Venice. And at the same time it was in the pavilion in, in, uh, in Venice. And, um, I also like that the, that, uh, the people who see this work are not uh, expecting to see art, and there's like a uh, this object is is, is totally on the, in, on the wrong spot there, but it uh, um, yeah, it's also like a, like a word that is spoken out in the in the in the wrong, sp wrong space or in the wrong moment, and I think it uh, I think it's really interesting. This is uh, also uh, like the previous work, also made with only three words, and it's um, it are three words that are uh, always very close to each other. Like, um, like this is my my upper leg bone. I think it's called femur in English, um, and a, and, a, and a cup and a, sh and a sugar cube. They are ve always very close uh, to each other, and. Um, um, like 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 everybody else, I'm also thinking about uh, you know that that I will that I will die and then I will uh, and I just want to uh, it's, it's something really um, not tragic but something really beautiful that you that you die finally and that you can leave things behind and I I just wanted to um, um, you know I was I was holding a sugar cube and I, I um, in above a table and. Um, um, without me, it could uh, it, it couldn't stay in, in the air. So I needed something to to hold it. Uh, without be, uh, me being there, and so I, I I took this cup and I took the uh, made a copy of my upper leg bone, and now um, uh, this bone and this cup are holding this sugar cube together, and I think it's really I really like it. But the thing is that. Um, uh, I was I was thinking about this cup, the, like the evolution of cups, that that um, that the first cups were like like um, folding hand, uh, folded hands that, that that took water out of the river and then the people made uh, cups of leaves and uh, hollowed uh, pieces of wood and 
And finally, they made a cup of ceramic, and the last moment, uh, the cup got, got an ear. And, uh, and this ear is really perfect to, to hold uh, a sugar cube. And this, this bone needed also something, so I made the, this uh, bubble in this bone to hold the sugar cube. And, uh, and I really like that they're holding the sugar cube together now, and uh, you know that, that they're just also dead objects, but they really do, do something, and they're, you know, they're working for me, and they will hold this sugar cube uh, also without me. And, um, yeah. And I think the most people in this room are also uh, uh, artists or want to become artists. And the great thing of, of being an artist is that you have time to think about this. <laughs> and um, and that, that there are like so many times there are cups uh, and, and sugar cubes and, and fumes in the same room, but nobody <laughs> thinks about these kind of things. But I, I, I have time for that. And sometimes when I make a work, I, I think um, that I'm uh, kind of, I'm really happy with it, but I'm also like, uh, it's also a pity that I made it already. And, um, and um, so I made myself a goal to make a work with, uh, uh, with only two words, but it didn't work out. Um, and at the same time, I also had, for years, I had an idea of uh, making a work with a, with a shadow. So I made this small piece, it's called Shadow Study. And it's, um, it's a copy also of, of, of a bone of me. And it's, uh, uh, and it's a cup that is upside down. And if you, if you put a cup upside down, there is a shadow falling out of the cup. And, um, and I realized that, uh, like, officially cups are white. Like, if you think about cups, they're all white. And, and your, your bones are also white but they're always covered with, with flesh and, and, and muscles and clothes. But they have the same color. And um, so it's a perfect place to drop a shadow on. And they're also near each other. And um, so, I, uh, um, so I'm, I'm really happy with, with this because, uh, because the shadow is now, uh, I, I made the shadow. Of course, the cup does it for me, but uh, I, yeah, it's, it's a shadow that I, that I created and that I have, and it's, a, it's an image of a shadow also. And it's also, the, the bone is made in the same way as the, the first figure that you saw on the chair. It's also made around a, a piece of wood. It's really like an image. And maybe it's good to talk um, um, about, um, you know, if you have such an idea, uh, you cannot, you have to place it in the world, and, and I wanted to have it, uh, on the right height, so I need to I need to I have to find a way to how, how to how to place it in the world. And I think it's very logical to 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 make this tripod so that it's like a you know it refers to uh, you know making images and making a, yeah Plato uh, really likes this work. Ah, this is another work that uh, maybe nobody likes, but I really like it. <laughs> it's like um, I, I had a, uh, some, some pieces of, of, of wax and old clothes, and I, I threw, threw them in a corner. And then I, uh, I threw uh, other pieces of rope in a corner. But I did it so many times until they, they became like language, until they formed a four and a two and a nine. And at that moment, uh, these, these ropes that I threw away, they come back to my head and uh, I think four to nine. And it's, yeah, I really like that. That you do something in the world and then, uh, then it comes back to your head. Yeah, this is uh, for me a very important piece, but um, it's maybe very unclear here, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's called Hallway with Sentences. And, um, 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 yeah, a lot of my works are, are, are made, uh, uh, made with, with, with uh, only a, f a few words. Like this is, a, like a, on, the, on the right you see a list of words, of alphabetically, and, and I spent some time to make as many sentences as, as possible with these words. 
And then I chose the, the white ones and the, the, the best ones. And I made like landscapes with them or like uh, still lives or like... Uh, um, yeah, and, and then when I had these sentences, I made the sculptures of them. So th this is one of them that came, came out of these sentences. Uh, it's called the colored room with black and white scene. So it's made uh, like here I have the word color and uh, room and uh, uh, black, white. So it became this, this sentence, a colored room with black and white scene. And it's a room with a figure on the, on the floor. And, and, um, and in the back against the wall you see uh, like, a, like a black and white scene. Like it's like, there are five objects. Like he made an, uh, like it's like a three-dimensional black and white photograph. And this is the, exactly the same sentence, but a very different room. Uh, it's also called the colored room with black and white scene. And it's a room with uh, uh, yeah, really just lots of objects. And it looks very chaotic, but it's very uh, ordered and very... Uh, this is also one of the sentences. Um, it's called the landscape with colors. And, uh, and it's exactly what you see. It's uh, like a yeah, landscape of colors. And um, yeah, I'm I'm, uh, I'm 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 really fascinated by uh, by, by by painting, and uh, I really want, wanted to be a painter also. But I never I, n I never managed to, to to really make a painting. And um, and I, I also like to. Um, um, I, I, when I had the sentence, uh, so my goal was to really make a like a landscape with colors, like a, um, you know, like a, like a, I thought about the impressionist. You know, they went into a landscape and they looked at the landscape, and then the landscape, uh, you know, goes in, into the the mind, and then they 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 put an image on a, on a canvas, and um, I tried to make a landscape. Uh, like really only in my head, and it's like a, it's like just a, a pile of colors that 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 is, is that is just a, in this in this. Yeah, I don't know how to. I I just wanted to make a landscape that that uh, like the 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 history of of landscape painting is really interesting because with with a, with a landscape painting you can really hold a feeling and um, and I. I yeah, became a kind of a melancholic landscape. This, kid, this thing, but it's really like a kit to to create something. You know, it's like a yeah. This is another work about uh, because the theme is also like I, I'm, I'm talking talking about landscape now, of, uh, about language. Um, um, this is something I made. Uh, I think in 1998, and I um, uh, in the beginning I, to I told you that I wanted to be a writer when I uh, when I was 18, and um, uh, that didn't work out. But I I I, um, I always uh, um, there's always something uh, that I still wanted, and and, and then I read a, a book uh, by Kafka, and I became really jealous about. Uh, about him that he, that he could write sentences and that I uh, could read them and then and then you know these sentences follow each other and uh, I I, um, I really wanted to write again and then I, what I did was I, I I went to the supermarket and I looked for an, uh, for a, for a product in the supermarket where I could write with and um, and I found out that with the tea bags you can really uh, make it like like a I don't know how to say it in English. You, uh, the, uh, like with tea bags, you can you, you can put the label up and you can put the label down, so you can make a kind of uh, binary language. You know, it's like, and I I I try to put these five tea bags in the best way possible. Like, uh, I think it's not not possible to make a, a more beautiful um, group of five tea bags, and. Uh, and, they, and they're trying, really trying to say or something, but I don't know exactly what. But uh, they really try to say something. And um, when I finished this, I, I, 
I really wanted to take it one step further, so I made this uh, this work. It's called uh, Finished Sentence, and it's um, there are lots of groups of tea bags, and uh, like all together they really try to say something, and um, and it's it's uh, yeah now it's here. This is this is another one. And it's really fantastic to make this. Uh, uh, and it's 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 a very slow process and it's uh, uh yeah. Mm. Yeah, this I want to show um to um I think the, the main 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 tool of, of being an artist for me at least is is uh, really uh, like a, like a, like a, like desire or that really like uh, that you really want to uh, uh, that you really want to do something. And for this work, I had, had three different goals, um, um, but they they were they were very separate. Like a, one one thing that I wanted to do was like to make a like a three dimensional night photograph. Like it, I really like that that uh, that that uh, at night in the, in the garden, like that the uh, yeah that everything the the colors disappear and that you that you uh, I really like it's really magical uh, at night and and I wanted to make a, f a photograph to, uh, like a three dimensional photograph to really have it and to place it on the table. And the other thing that I wanted to do was like um, I wanted to put uh, two objects in the world in the same spot. And uh, I tried it with a cup and uh, many other things, but it was uh, like not, totally not good. And uh, the, another goal that I had was like that I um, that I um, for a long time I wanted to make a, a work with a, with a with a slack rope that that I held between my hands. And I wanted to pla place it in the most uh, tense place in the world. And then um, I just put all these three ideas together. So I. I I made a scene of a of a uh, with a slack rope that hangs so in in a in a garden, and uh, and the slack rope is in the same place as a cat, so I had to cut, uh, cut the cat in in, in two because uh, if I cut the the rope in two, it would be two ropes. But if you cut the cat in two, it, it's still one cat, <laughs> or like like what the word cat, and and then I made the. Like a three-dimensional copy of it, and I placed it uh, like a, like a, like I cut it out of the night and placed it on a yeah on the table, and uh, so uh, yeah, I managed to make uh, three works in in one uh, yeah in one. It, like in my studio, I have a lot of problems that I have to solve, and this was like there were three three problems that I solved in, in one work. Uh, this is another work that I. Um, it's a series of works that I. Um, it's also related to language a, a bit. Like, um, like I'm also very fascinated by, by, um, um, for example, like like if you if you place different verticals together, it's also uh, forms a kind of language. You know, they also um, like 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 this this hat when I made this. I wanted to make a like a like a like a chord like a like a like a piano chord, like of, of um, and um, and when, and when I made this work, I wanted to make something that that um, should have been made in the 1920s. You know, I, I was not alive then, but um, if you place this in 1920, it's uh, it's perfect. But nobody 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 made it at the time. It's it's really like a gap in art art history. This work also took me maybe um, maybe also 18 years to make. I had this idea of, of making. A, I wanted to make. A, a, I really like Piero della Francesca, this painter, Italian painter, and uh, uh, in this painting, the 
he has really uh, paintings of really beautiful necks and wanted to make a, a, a sculpture. Uh, yeah, I really wanted, wanted to reach that, uh, that level that he did. I don't, yeah. And I also wanted to make a work with, um, I have short hair and uh, I really wanted to, uh, I imagined how, um, yeah, it must be wonderful to have long hair and that, it, that it's waves and uh, yeah, I just made this work. And this is the reason why I made this uh, uh, newspaper with fives. Because I, I, um, uh, I wanted, wanted to make a work. Um, maybe this is the only work that I made about, uh, about art. Because I, do, I don't want to make work about art, but I wanted to make one word about, work about art. And it's, it's, uh, it's, the idea is very simple. It's, it's like an envelope. And I... I um, um, like the envelope is like uh, maybe a little bit too low. Uh, you know, this fox has an envelope in his uh, attached to his nose, and this is uh, I try to find a way to to handle over an envelope. Now, normally, if you handle over an envelope to somebody, you you, you just give it or you, you mail it, but you you can also give it in a very uh, yeah complex way, and 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 in this case. Uh, the way that I handle it over the envelope is uh, um, um, you know there's, there's nothing in this envelope it's just an empty envelope but it's more about how I handle it over and um, so I made this uh, fox and I made this envelope and I made this uh, closet and I made this table and then I realized that that uh, that uh, the chain would uh, really uh, uh, Tear down the, the paint of the of this of this uh, table, so I wanted to protect uh, this table. So I made uh, I had to make a newspaper for that. And in this case, I made a newspaper with only fives that I could also use in the room with fives. So I, actually, I, I needed only two, like for one for in the in the, in the room with fives and one for uh, for this piece. And if but if you if you print one newspaper, it's uh, uh, yeah, it's not possible technically. So, um, so I, I, I made 150,000 and I spread them house to house. And this is a work that is uh, uh, also made only of a few words that are like uh, like very related to each other, like like a table and a, uh, chairs and a, and a figure and clay. But I, I, I try to make a work that is very tense and also very uh, very fragile and um, and it's really like a balancing trick and uh, and it's it's uh, I think it's it's hard to describe like uh, but it's in a way it's very very simple like with uh, yeah I just wanted to yeah to make a work with with normal words and then really create as much tension tension as possible. And at the same time, it's, it's very, uh, the figure is very relaxed and very uh, at ease. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is another work that I made uh, a few years ago. And it's, um, um, it's, a, it's an image of a factory. And in this work, I wanted to, um, uh, you know, I have a lot, a lot of colleagues. And one of one of my colleagues is uh, De Chirico, and I uh, and I really lo love his work. And I also lo love his work because it's so. Some of his paintings are so silent and so. And I wanted to make him uh, jealous with uh, uh, with his work. And I uh, I wanted to make a, a room a room with a factory. So I, I you know it's 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 again it's a, it's a work with a, yeah it's only one word in a room. Like a, it's a factory, and um, it's an image of a factory that is made in a, in, a, in a kind of a living room. And this factory is connected to a figure. Like there's one one foot against this uh, part of the factory, and um, like in like if you see this in reality, because it's difficult in this picture to see it, but um, 
like under this factory, there's kind of a, a kind of machine, and this machine is based on the very first floor plan that I uh, made. And um, yeah. uh, this work is called the perspective study. This too. And it's like these fake newspapers, then, but then printed in perspective. And um, yeah, so I, I almost made a painting. <laughs> I, I want to sh you show you something um, like um, uh, of, of my everyday life. Like uh, like I, I work in a in a very big studio and. and uh, I work at many, many works at once, and uh, lots of things fail. And uh, but I really don't care. Like uh, I don't care if a work take, takes 20 years or like one week. It, does, it doesn't matter. Like uh, yeah, I finish it when I want. And um, so I'm, the whole day I'm just walking around. And uh, and uh, and if, if a work doesn't work, I, I think about something else. And. Uh, This is a. Um, I, I forgot to put uh, drawings in my, my slideshow, but uh, yeah, I also make uh, drawings. But yeah, and most of my drawings I just put on top of each other, so I, they're like big piles, and I, I don't show them, but I, I, I just uh, yeah, I just I just make them. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, this piece is is now in Venice. There's this big hat, and um, something you don't see in this picture is like that uh, on the back. There's like a uh, it's like a working table. So in the in the back there's a place where I can uh, sit and make drawings and uh, uh, and I like that 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 uh, this hat is in front of me and then it's it's very a ni nice place to write and and work. Yeah, that's it uh, in terms of slides. So uh, I hope you have questions. Yeah, but uh, um, uh, recently I hired uh, uh, um, an assistant. But most of the time I, I work alone. But uh, now I have uh, like an assistant who works uh, three days a, a week. And uh, like um, um, like uh, every week, a few hours, there's a, a person coming who uh, who uh, who is a painter. And he, for example, for this big hat, the it's it's not really wood. It's uh, most of the, of the wood is fake wood, and it's painted like uh, like real wood. And he's so he comes uh, like uh, a few hours a week. Um, it's really really very he's very crafted in doing this. So yeah, um, I I um, for example um, uh, let me see if I. Uh, for example, in, the, in this picture, uh, you see like this, these iron chairs. I just, uh, um, I, like I don't make them in my studio, but I ask somebody to make it in a, in a company. Like I could also hire somebody in my studio who makes these iron chair, chairs, but I really, uh, I also need time alone in my studio. So I, I know there are also many artists uh, who have a lot of exhibitions who work with many people, but I, I, I really want to, yeah. Keep small and uh, yeah, yeah. I hope that answers your question. Thank okay. you, Mark. Um, 
If everyone could just raise your hand for questions so we can record them. Um, okay. Yes. Hi. Um, I've been Mark here. I've enjoyed the here on the. Oh, the, I, oh yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I've enjoyed looking at your work from Documenta to Venice to Tanya's and Carol's gallery, and and until recently, I was not aware of the fact that the objects were modeled upon the structure of words, which makes it mm. even more interesting. I was wondering how much uh, the. I mean, I presume you think of the words uh, in Dutch first, a language no, in I English. do not know. I. I, I, uh, I uh, I work in English. Ah, My English, English is not right. so good, but uh, yeah. um, good enough to make a... <laughs> yeah, okay. I, yeah, you know what, what my, really my goal is, you know, you have these newspapers with, with all of the English words, and my goal is to say uh, really much with only a few words. You know, like, uh, uh, for example, the, 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 the work with the table and the figure, and that is uh, in balance, balance, it's only made, made with like uh, just a few words and uh, and um, yeah my goal is really to 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 use as less words as possible mm -hmm. my question anyway i mean your partial answer but do the same words the same objects in dutch uh, have some kind of alliteration or relationship between letters that may have triggered some of the associations um not not really but uh, you know it's it's um, it's an interesting question because i i, I uh, uh, I'm also uh, uh, interested in uh, Raymond Roussel. Maybe you, you know him. He's, he's like a, this French writer who influenced uh, Marcel Duchamp, and um, and he worked in a, in a very different way. But also, like uh, he also used language as as a, as, a, as, a, as a machine and as a, as a, as a, and you know he he made he made, um, he made, he made uh, books like like like. Word, words can have uh, like two, like a double meaning, and he, for example, he, he wrote a book or like a story, and it started with one sentence and it ended, uh, ended with the same sentence. And but the, uh, but like the uh, because the words had, had double meanings, uh, so he wrote the, the like a story between the same sentence, sentences, and. Um, uh, but for me, it's it's more like um, I also really think a lot about uh, uh, like like objects and and and, and how how our th thinking relates to objects and um, and how how you can be caught thinking in objects and um, and yeah and that's really really fascinating and uh, very very there's a lot of work to do I think yeah. Um, Mark, I have a question for you, actually. Thank you, first, um, for your very generous um, sharing of your thought process with us. Um, going back to the idea of context, I think one of the things that I've always been intrigued by in your work is the way that you so carefully install your sculptures and installations, and this idea of a room is so important. and. When you first told me the story about the supermarket, I thought, what does it mean to have a, a number of other objects that are suddenly in the same room? And I wondered if you could share your thoughts mm -hmm. on that a little bit in terms yeah. of, you know, so much of our surrounding public environment is so much, you know, about signs and mm -hmm. language-based yeah. images and yeah. how do they invade the visual language that you've created? Yeah, yeah well, that's, that's one of the reasons why I made this room advice. <laughs> like, um, like, is that that uh, uh, that there is so much that that our world is is has so much information that that you cannot uh, uh, that that you that that uh, of, co of course our mind is able to 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 if you see an object that 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 that, that, that you can um, think think the objects in words like for example uh, five. Um, there's so much information like that that you cannot uh, you become crazy if you do that like with everything and uh, um, um, yeah I, I just realized that that like if if you're in public space that that you that you uh, really see everything with uh, with uh, like through matte glass in a way because you have to you have to uh, 
like uh, you just cannot uh, handle everything, you know. It's like, uh, but I also um, when you ask the question, I also uh, uh, you know, what I really like about uh, making exhibitions is uh, um, that you can um, uh, make like I really like to make exhibitions with more rooms, and and if I if I uh, I, I really try to do that as a musician in a way. Like I uh, normally I start uh, with with one room and I, I uh, and for me that that room makes kind of like a sound and then I think of another room that that really uh, reacts on that first sound and and it's really like like composing like 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 almost like a musical piece and that like I try to achieve a point and when 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 my exhibitions are, are, are finished that that if you walk through it your 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 mind becomes like a like a camera and your eyes become like a camera. It is very. Everything is very concentrated, and and the way you move through the space, it's uh, and and the way you relate it to the objects, it's it's like like very. I try to to create something that is very focused and very yeah, very precise, and uh, yeah, maybe almost too precise. Like you have to know where you're looking, maybe. Hmm? You have to know where you're looking. I think when you walk through an exhibition of yours, there are very specific sight lines that yeah, you've yeah, yeah. chosen for the right view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, we'll take some more questions. I have, um, I have two, if that's OK. Um, mm -hmm. The first is, I was wondering. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was wondering if uh, when you, you said when you are in your space and you've got a piece that's not working, then you move on. Mm -hmm. But when you know that it is, um, is that in maquette, or is it a done and built piece, and, and what happens? And then the second, so what happens when it's good? And then the second question is, it's a little harder to ask, I think, but it seems like you're exploring simultaneity. And mm -hmm. I'm interested, if you're looking at the simultaneity which is surprising, or the two or three things which are in contradiction but exist simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's a proper question. But yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah. Um, the first question is like a. Uh, yeah, there's, there's something very strange about a. Uh, about how your mind works with when you're in, in creativity. It's like like a. Like sometimes I get a very good idea, and then I I try not to think about it. Like I'm, I'm I could be really happy and make it, but I I don't make it, and I I, I store it away, and and uh, and then I focus on a really bad idea that 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 I don't know what what to do with, and I I make that, and um, I don't know why, but uh, uh, and I also like. Uh, um, I, as, several times I had also, uh, for example, I'm, I'm also reworking a piece that I showed in Documenta, and, and I think it's it's really a good piece. But I always thought like uh, I can make it one step uh, better, and so I, I uh, uh, after Documenta never left my studio again, and now I'm I'm uh, um, I'm making it better, and uh, so it's 11 years later, and. Um, but I, w I was already happy with it once, and uh, I think I will be happy with it uh, twice. And it, uh, yeah, some works, that, yeah, I, 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 I really feel free to do that. Like it's, uh, um, in the moment when when uh, when the work is ready, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's really addictive, and uh, uh, yeah, you immediately want to make another work. And uh, uh, yeah, so um, maybe it's also good to, to uh, because uh, yeah, many of you are, are like st yeah, still studying and uh, and you want to make uh, exhibitions later. But maybe one one thing that I that uh, is from my experience is that it, uh, that you don't feel you don't feel it when you have an exhibition, like uh, like for example now I have an exhibition in Venice and this is great. But in my studio, it, uh, I don't. Yeah, my studio is the same, and I, I don't just don't feel it. You know, it's like, like um, uh, you really uh, like the like uh, I really get my uh, my kick out of uh, like making making the works and making an exhibition. But but 
but not really a, a, that that people see it. I don't, like that's very uh, abstract for me. It's like a, um, it does not really really matter if 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 hundred people see it or you, you just don't feel it because you're not there. You know, you're in your studio and uh, you're making your things. But it's really great to. When it's possible to be an artist, it's fantastic. I'm, I'm really grateful that I, for that that I can do it and that I that I really have time to 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 do my thing. And um, I think we have time for uh, two more questions. There's one in the back, and we have one here in the front. Hi. <coughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for. I'm here. Well, well, well. <laughs> oh, the, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank so, you, yeah. thank you for your lecture. I just wonder if you could tell us something about your interest in books mm -hmm. and all this thing about Roma publications and how yeah. it does relate to your practice as an artist yeah, yeah. and as a publisher too. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. First of all, I think uh, that that the books are like um, it's really fantastic form of. Uh, yeah, also making an exhibition like uh, like we we try to see books as, as as small exhibitions in the form of a book, and uh, and I really like that 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 uh, if you make a book, it can be uh, uh, very cheap uh, to for people to buy it, and and uh, and you can open it whenever you want, and you can open it uh, ten years later, or like uh, and you can look in it uh, when you're on a toilet even like a, like it's it's really like a. And 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 you have like a, this rhythm of pages, like you you, uh, you can make a book that that you can never that 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 uh, that doesn't matter where you open it in a way, it's, and you can make a book that is, has this rhythm of uh, like the first page and the second, and it's it's just a fantastic form of of thinking, I think, and um, has so many possibilities and. Uh, and the, the reason that we started Roma Publications was also that uh, I, I needed to make some books uh, for my work, and for example these newspapers. But also, um, sometimes it's really uh, fantastic to make a, uh, to make a book with, uh, with friends, and it's, it's 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 much easier than with a museum, because you can. Uh, you can change things at night, and you don't have to explain it why you change them because you, you know you know what you know when something is good. So it's it's. Um, and when we started in in ninety eight, it was also the time that for the first time you could uh, use digital photographs. In a, uh, so it was much cheaper to to print, and uh, yeah, and uh, we we also just just did it, you know, like uh, and. Uh, and also, we, we had fans that also wanted to make books, so we we, we just we just did it. And uh, and after after making a few books, we realized that we were a publisher. And um, we had many boxes of with books, and we we had no distribution because we never thought about it. And um, so yeah, it's it's uh, we just made the books because we wanted to make them. And I, I'm really used to like if I make a work, I really make the work because I want to make it. So. It's the same thing with the book, and um, and uh, and also the same thing with uh, making artworks. It's it's also addictive. So yeah, uh, if you finish the book, you want to make another one. Okay, one more question in the back, and uh, we'll be finished. Hi, Mark. Thank you for your time. And you stated yeah. that you right here. Oh yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> you, you stated that you don't want to make work about art. Mm -hmm. That that was really interesting to me. I never heard that before, and I was wondering if you could elaborate on that. Um, yeah, I, I also want, don't want to make a work about uh, museums, and I don't want to make a work about public space, uh, and I don't want to make work about politics. And um, um, the reason why I don't want to make works about politics is because. Uh, it would be terrible if if uh, if something in the world happens and then then your work totally changes and uh, in a way that you don't want. Uh, um, the reason that I want, don't want to make work works about art because it's uh, um, uh, other artists already did that. 
in a, in a good way, and I'm really happy that they uh, already did it. And uh, it's, a, it's a waste of time for me. And also, uh, um, uh, you know, there are also, like, there's a whole generation who made works about uh, what a museum is, but I'm, I'm really happy that there is a museum. And that, that, that the human, humans uh, invented the museum. And uh, so I don't want to uh, waste the space and time uh, in a museum, because it's, uh, it's already done, and it's a pity to, uh, to talk about that, I think. So, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good place to end. Um, please join me, everybody, in thanking Mark for. Yeah.